I got way more heat from my Diddy video than this guy did. Oh, Jack. Oh my God. <laughs> Have you noticed this recent trend where more and more creators are making names for themselves, making brands for themselves, and just basing their whole content around being public nuisances? The current biggest face of doing this has to be Johnny Somali, who's been arrested in three different countries for just basically being a public nuisance. So the 23-year-old American live streamer Ismail Ramzi Khaled, also known as Johnny Somali, got arrested for trespassing in Japan. Oh, hey, oh, Fukushima, Fukushima. Whoa. And he made sure to smile and wave to the camera as he was escorted out by the cops. Man, he's such a child. So basically, this is a guy that had been just an annoying in Japan for months. Chief Cabinet Secretary of Japan actually made a statement saying that YouTubers and live streamers need to refrain from violating other people's privacy and causing a nuisance. But it's not like he did this just in Japan. He also did it in South Korea and in Israel. <laughs> 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 Come on, dude. Can I eat your <laughs> Eat your eat your ah, 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 ah. like that? Oh my god! Oh my yo yo! <laughs> oh my yo, Gino! Oh, you a bad <laughs> sort of guy. You a bad. I said you to dinner. I swear to God. I swear to God. I change your life. I change your life, baby. Baby, I changed your life. I promise you. You a bad right here. I don't care. Well, I was right to say you should never have pitched. Your father was right. Your father was right. All he does is go around harassing people, throwing stones, and then what's worse is hiding his hand, acting as if he's not doing anything, as if he's not harassing women, harassing officers, just being a public nuisance as a whole. He's even cultivated this audience that's, I'm coining a new phrase, his train wreck audience that can't turn away because they want to see him crash out so bad. It's even getting so bad to the point where people will donate money just to see if he can do something more extreme. They'll send him like $5 to play whatever message or blast whatever song that he has in public and a lot of the times it's totally inappropriate. And these people, I wouldn't even consider supporters. They're more so hate watching, wanting him to do the most self-destructive things in public so he can get arrested or maybe even hurt. He got arrested in Japan for going on a bus and screaming Hiroshima Nagasaki, we're gonna do it again. And he's referring to dropping a bomb on them, which happened in World War II, which is a disgusting, not funny, distasteful, and downright dirty content. Like, I don't even see how somebody could come up with something like that in their mind and be okay with saying that and going about the rest of their day you know you know why you do this yes man yes what do you mean where you from i'm from where you know where i'm from where you from i'm from uh america you're from america yes so am i you're from america yeah you're being obnoxious you know what we do to you what do you do we will do again. Do what? Nagasaki. You understand? Do you think I'm dead, please? Where are you from? I'm from America. Where are you from? What's your ethnicity? Texas, buddy. What's your ethnicity? I'm Korean. Then sit down, brother. Why don't you sit down? Korean, know what happened to you? Don't touch me. Don't touch me, brother. Korean, what's Korean? Where you know what did you do? Public nuisance or public prank content has existed forever. And this is something that I've been talking about for a minute. I called it out way back then before I even had a channel going in this direction. But the groundwork was laid by content creators like Jadeon and Keneal Joseph and DeAdrian Harding. And some of that stuff was totally fine. And people did not take too much into it because it was a joke. It was some sort of laugh, funny or stuff like that involved in it. Bro, I'm Johnny Blaze. I got this. I just rolled the gutter ball. Can I go get my watermelon? The watermelon that he has? 
No, I had another one. It was FDA approved. It was a watermelon. Why would you bowl with a watermelon? Dude, Perfect doesn't even bowl with a watermelon. They don't bowl with- That's the point. They don't do it. But they have 56 million subscribers. How many subs do you got? 200. 200? Wow. Adrian! <laughs> would you even be able to get out now, man? This chicken wings and ranch up here. All the time. Oh no, he has a disability where he has to hold it. This is my second time getting pressed off the cooler. This is my second time. But eventually, even their harmless acts became harmful. And this is why people like Jadeon stepped away from the whole scene. I did a lot of crazy stuff in my videos. But the one thing I think that haunts me the most is one of my most popular pranks was, was whenever I snuck into the Gatorade HQ and I deceived the security guards and lied and said that I was working there and that I was part of the commercial team. And I got the prank done, got millions of views off of it. So many people giving me props. But what a lot of you guys don't know is three people lost their jobs because of me. Because I lied and was saying that I worked there I got three security officers fired that had been working there for years, all because I wanted to play a practical joke, all because I wanted to entertain you guys. And that's evil. And people been criticizing people for doing these public prank actions. I remember when Kai Sinat did that whole, let me take the change out of somebody that's working at a restaurant's tip jar prank and people totally obliterated him. But to be honest with you, those were even more harmless than what we're seeing today. Now, a big thing that I talk about on this channel is one up culture. And I believe that people watched that content and then took it to the whole nother level. We're talking about the Fousies, we're talking about the Johnny Somalis, and we're talking about the Jack Doherty's. And there's a new guy on the scene, Trevon Sellers, that is so abysmal, but we'll get to them later. These are people who thrive on something that is so strange and something that should not even be something to be proud of that it makes no sense to me why they would even feel good at night. And I'm talking about negativity. These people create spaces and places in which negative things happen to them, around them, with them, or through them, through their chat, or whoever, as long as the space is negative, they feel like that is creating content. And I think that's just a reflection of the entire space as a whole. Like on YouTube, the negativity scene is just so popular however they take things to the next level and what they don't realize and maybe they do it just doesn't matter to them ultimately these platforms will start laying down harsher and harsher and harsher restrictions and then they'll act like the boy who cried wolf and say i didn't do anything this is attack on freedom of speech until they end up on kick and then rumble and then x and then off the internet now because they can't do a lot of this stuff in north america they've decided to take this to other countries which i think is some of the most brain dead thing in the world because these countries are not only used to these streamers doing this content like this I think it's pretty understandable in the North America sphere that, you know, we have big content creators who can come out in public, make content, stream, et cetera, et cetera. Me going out without a camera isn't necessarily the strangest thing, but when they go to other countries like South Korea, wherever they're going, that is not something they're accustomed to. And they're also being disrespectful culturally. And these people have harsher restrictions and guidelines than North America does. These people don't even realize it. I liked when people like Jadeon or Deadrian were doing some of these jokes because usually they left the environment on a positive note. I think even Kai in those videos would tip people or pay people. I know when I worked with them, he would at least pay people for their time or any sort of inconvenience after the deed was done. But these people set the scene on fire and leave in a negative blaze. And even if Jadeon or some of these other creators didn't rectify the situation right then and there, they would go back and make whole of the situation after the fact, like the whole Pokemon incident. Pokemon and Jideon have released their makeup video. The pair have been on a journey, with Jideon initially hate raiding Pokemon and getting banned from Twitch, throwing some ninja and Jessica Blevins, but it looks like the pair have finally made up. After images appeared of them sharing a chicken sandwich, they've now shared behind the scenes of the meetup. Roll the tape. Kept on calling me Dijon Mustard. So at first I thought it was like a little shot at me, but then I was like, maybe you're just obsessed with it. So got you a lifetime supply of Dijon Mustard. Thank you so much. I feel like he really meant his apology. We talked for like an hour, dude. Back in 2016, 2017, all those 
prank videos in the hood were super duper popular. People would go to these dangerous areas, push people's buttons, try to get a reaction, and there's some nastiness in it, but ultimately a lot of these things were harmful, at least on the surface. You see, the community was split back then. Yeah, they were a nuisance, but some of it was fake, like clear fake content just for the outrage or just for the bait. Or if it wasn't fake, at the end of the prank, they would at least clarify that, hey, this is a prank, bro. This is a prank, prank, prank. This is a prank, prank, prank. Oh, I'm, just, What's up, bro? I'm just kidding, bro. We're doing a prank. Oh, don't don't play like that bro well, just now again i didn't like any of that content back then there's so many underlying problems with this the whole narrative of the hood when they were just around black people there's a lot to unpack in that stuff but at least it was somewhat harmless i guess i can't really vouch for that stuff but still it is totally different than what we're dealing with today those clearly labeled as pranks it's a prank it's a prank it's a prank today they don't even say stuff like that Another problem is that a lot of this content is fake. See, back in the day, Fousey used to do a lot of real pranks and stuff, but now this is seeming to be manufactured content. This is clip farming taken to the highest level. Now, the problem lies within the audience in this regard is because a couple of things, we watch it, we consume it, we talk about it, and it keeps the content flowing and it keeps people thinking that this is the way to go. It keeps them monetized, it keeps them in business. But also with the audience, they then try to replicate that if they're going to be the next greatest YouTuber on the scene, next biggest on the block. But the sad part is everybody can't differentiate when somebody is clip farming, so it doesn't end up being the best result. And I know that I play a part in the conversation of what content is talked about, what content is made, but to be honest with you, these guys are losers. And I want people to know that these guys are losers. These are the people that you should look out for, avoid at all costs, block, mute, whatever you need to do on social media, and don't get caught up in the clip farm especially when they make attacks on different ethnic backgrounds, different genders, different minorities, just different people as a whole, and they attack them and use the words content as a scapegoat for all of this nonsense. Now, I'll say this. Surprisingly, the Fousey's and the Jacks and the Johnny Somalis of the world have been pretty tame compared to this guy. This is 20-something-year-old Trevon Sellers, who isn't necessarily even creating content. He's just harassing people, and the cameras just so happen to be on sometimes. He's been so bad, and he's done stuff in the U.S. It's absolutely absolutely ridiculous, like making threats on social media and to actual police departments. He's been detained before and he's come to the point where police are launching full on investigations, urging people who can make claims that he has harassed them before to step forward so they can put him behind bars for a very long time. Hey, excuse me, sir. Hey, I was wondering, are you hungry by any chance, man? So a YouTuber runs into a homeless guy in the streets of California by a Wendy's and he's smoking his crack outside of the Wendy's and he offers to buy him some food. Would you like a Baconator, fries, a drink? Is that cool? All right, what's your name, man? One Baconator combo, please. Large fry to a Baconator, man. I was homeless myself, so I, I want to make sure you get on the right path. And, you know, you're always able to, you know, get back on your feet. You know, so I, just, I want you to enjoy this. I mean, the homeless guy is sitting there looking at the Baconator like he just won the lottery, and this dude eats it right in front of his face. I mean, seriously, how big of a piece of could you be? Like, give the man half the burger at least. God, or a fry? You can't even spare a fry, you fat. All right, take care. Have a nice day. My ultimate thing in this conversation is where do these people see the long-term success of doing content like this? I know we talk about digital footprint, but this is about building a business. And even businesses have projections as to what the long-term future and horizons are going to be. You're not going to be making pranks until you're 30 years old or you'll look like Fousey and we know how he's doing. You'll be deplatformed from all these platforms that don't want to put up with you. You're only going to make the laws and restrictions about filming and recording in public much, much worse for you. Then once you're forced to do stuff inside, you can only do so much harassing or calling on people from inside your home. What do you think the long-term strategy of this is? I think this is an indication of what society really values and it looks like clicks and likes are drawing a massive audience. YouTube isn't platforming this stuff. Like they're not monetizing it at least. They might let you put the video up, but you're not getting any monetization from this. You're not gonna be a part of any partner programs. And even if you do somehow find a way to squeak past the barriers of entry to get to monetization via YouTube, you will be at the lowest, and I do mean the lowest CPMs possible. That's why you see all these videos like Pop the Balloon, the ones that get real super freaky, put those ads in it where people can do their cash app and get some money or whatever scheme or scam they're running. That's why they have those in there though. They rack up thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of views, and they don't make a red sense from AdSense. But that's because these platforms are getting stricter and stricter on what they want on their 
platform and they're not gonna put up with this BS. You might've been able to make a couple of dollars here and there. You might have your name in the conversations for a video or two for commentary channels. Maybe some kids will recognize you on the street, but this can't be some sort of career. This isn't something that you hang your hat on. This will affect your dating life. This will affect your future employment at any sorts of jobs. This will affect so many things that just don't affect you, but affect the creator economy as a whole. I just don't understand why do this. The only reason that I could think of is that these people are addicted to validation because they never had any in their actual life. So now they're resorting to any means necessary to get some sort of likes or conversation about it at this point i'm seriously sick of talking about it i don't even necessarily know how to end this video besides something that you probably already know don't platform these people i feel like social media should be studied for some sort of like mental illness or something like that god